Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Please hit the subscribe button and um, help us out non-financially. Uh, just click on the button, it's free. Um, hit the like button, obviously you're going to love this interview. Um, and please comment below on your favorite Joe Satriani album, song, story, or whatever. I mean, I'm excited about bringing on my guest here. I actually hit the record button yesterday because I didn't want to miss uh, screwing that up. So without further ado, I bring to you Mr. Joe Satriani. How you doing, Joe? Hey, love those glasses. Oh, man. I'm sorry about that. I I, I I came in costume as well, buddy. So, wow. how you, Thanks for taking this interview. I know you're a very busy man. That's all right. Can I take my costume off now? Absolutely. <laughs> You can see my tired eyes. Oh, my God. Oh, well, I can imagine. I've been up since yesterday waiting for this interview. Anyhow, <laughs> um, before we get started, um, I've got a small list of people that want me to say hello. Oh, that's um, a nice list. <laughs> actually, um, it's it's a real list. Um, i got four friends on Facebook, and three of them <laughs> asked me to say hi. Joy Richard, uh, Maggie Drummer, and this one you're going to um, enjoy because uh, he bought your VIP package to meet you. At nice. the Fisher Theater in Detroit, my friend Alex Detour is going to go see right. you in April in Detroit. So um, he bought the VIP package. So Alex says he can't wait to meet you. Hey, Alex. Can't wait to meet you. Yeah, he's had a crush on you since high school. Um, <laughs> no, he's, he's just a great big fan. He's a great guitar player, too. So before we get into the G3, um, you're a busy, busy person, obviously. Um mm -hmm. You've got the Satch Buy Tour starting in uh, March till May, 13 dates, I think I counted. And then you go with the Best of All Worlds with, um, and this is um, warms my heart. You're going to be going with, um, obviously, Jason, um, Michael, Sammy, yourself. And yeah. you're going to be um, supported by Loverboy. Yeah. <laughs> um, a good friend of mine, uh, well, I think he's a good friend, uh, Mike uh, Reno. Um, the last time I chatted with Mike, and I'm going to be chatting with him again, I shared baby pictures with him. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Look at that. Congratulations. So, yeah, thanks. So you're going to be so friggin' busy, man. Um, yes. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm looking at my schedule over there in my studio board, and I realize I'm going to get bring my guitars to Gary Brower to get tweaked for the tour rehearsals for G3 or next week. Uh, we start on the 23rd in Tucson, the G3 tour with Eric Johnson and Steve I. Mm -hmm. Then the Monsters Cruise at the beginning of March. And then, as you said, the Satch Vi tour. And then, best of all, words. So, yeah, I'm going to be busy to September. Yeah. I'm be a little, a little recording after that. Yeah. I, I'm a little confused. The G3. Okay. I got a three part question then. Okay. So, is it going to be held in Davos again? And what are the other two countries? Because you're representing the United States. And what will you guys be talking about um, other than what's going on uh, around the world? Well, we're talking about the basically electing Steve I and Eric Johnson as prime ministers of the world, of the planet. And I, of course, will be the overlord to control all things economic. You won't be the Klaus Schwab, will you? <laughs> no, I have no idea. Can I tell you a funny story about the name G3? You can so, tell me everything. This is we. So, you know, going back to 95, I walked into my management offices and I said, you know, thank you very much. I have this great career. I can do whatever I want. I'm playing around the world, but I'm lonely. In other words, I, I never get to hang out with guitar players. And ever since I was a, a young, crazy teenager playing heavy metal, that's all I wanted to do was hang out with my friends and play guitar. So when do I get to do that? Uh, maybe we should start our own festival. So that basically started this whole idea. Let's see if we can come up with our own guitar-based festival. We got it down to three guys because we realized that was the only amount of time uh, that would be attractive to other artists. In other words, if you said you can come to this, sh join this tour, and you get like 45 minutes to an hour to do whatever you want, then it's kind of attractive. So if I had eight guitar players, they'd only get 10 minutes apiece, and they wouldn't want to come, you know? So we settled on G, uh, on three, and then we came up with the, the name G3, but we had to go to court uh, to secure the right to use that for the concert series because of two things. Number one, right. Apple computers, they had a G3 computer coming out and they really didn't want us using that, uh, that phrase G3. 
And there was an automatic weapons company that made a machine gun, for lack of a better phrase, that was called the G3. And we oh. literally went to court and the judge decided, Apple, you can't do concerts or automatic weapons. And, uh, you know, G3, automatic weapons company, you can't do computers and concerts. And Mr. Satriani, you can't do computers and weapons, but you can each do your own thing and use G3. And that's how we wound up owning the phrase G3 for concerts only. Well, that, that's interesting because I, I know the background. I mean, I know you guys started in 2006. Um, you, Eric, and Steve did the oh, first. We started in, in 1996. Well, 96, excuse me. Yeah, because I think you're coming up to the 30, 30 something. Is it the 30th anniversary? Wait, let me do yeah, one we have a Yeah, we, we're, this is an anniversary tour. Not only are we recording it, but we're filming it. Uh, oh, wow. My, my son, uh, Zizi, get this. This is crazy. About uh, two or three days before the very first G3 concert and the very first tour we did in 96, he, it was uh, ZZ's fourth birthday. And we decided, you're four years old now, you can come out on tour. And it's it was the beginning of his life, joining his parents, traveling around the world all the time, you know, and, and the circus that is our group of friends. And uh, so he, he reminded me uh, last year that this anniversary was coming up. And he said, you know, he's a young filmmaker. So he said, I'd, I'd like to do a documentary about me growing up around that and just coming to terms with you and your friends and this whole world of guitar playing. It became so normal to him. Wow. This, this crazy world. And, and it was started with G3. So uh, he spent the last year interviewing maybe 60 guitar players. He's been to London to interview Brian May and Robert Fripp, and he's done Christopher Guest and Steve I and, uh, you know, uh, Steve Miller and, and uh, 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 Nuno Betancourt. And just the, the list is crazy how many people he's talked to. He's going to be doing uh, uh, Kirk Hammett later on this month. Uh, it, it really is amazing uh, how it, the film has become about guitar players and guitar and what it means to them what it means to ZZ as this, the son of this crazy guy who plays instrumental rock guitar. Um, and so he's coming out on tour to film the whole thing. It'll sort of culminate with the, the two final shows in Los Angeles. Uh, and, uh, and he's also going to be jumping on stage for a song uh, wow. just to experience it firsthand. You know, it's like the director finally getting to step in front of the camera and see what it's really all about, you know, um, so it's, it's really, a. it's like when people say, oh, this is a reunion tour. It's like, it's so much more than a reunion tour. And did I mention there's also going to be an audio, a live concert, uh, audio album. Yeah. You uh, said it was, well, you didn't say that, but you said it's being recorded. Yeah. Yeah. So we're recording it. It's being filmed. The filming part is really about the documentary. So it's not a concert film, but the audio film is there. Uh, I mean, the audio uh, portion will be recorded from the, the whole tour. Um, and uh, it's just very exciting because it's a it's a coming together of, of the three of us, Steve and Eric, and uh, they, those are the guys I chose for the very first G3. Right. And this is a great regathering of spirits, you know. So, yeah, and it looks like your your heart's warm, too, because your son's involved. So just let me clarify, um, the filming is coinciding with his film? Yeah, yeah, it okay. is part of it. I mean, that's kind of like one of the things that's happening uh, as ZZ addresses uh, his, his life in, in his unique position growing up, uh, having me as his father and, and watching this music world progress. Uh, we've, we did a documentary uh, a number of years ago called Beyond the Supernova. Mm -hmm. And uh, people can go check that out on Netflix or Amazon uh, Prime, and lots of different uh, streaming services. And that was really just about the creative process that he noticed uh, me going through every time I tried to reinvent myself for a new album. Um, and uh, that was a little crazier as far as the style of the documentary. This one is a bit more planned out uh, because there's the, the two things, basically his perspective growing up. Uh, I should say there's three. There's the all the other guitar players coming in, talking to ZZ, giving him advice, giving him their perspective on the guitar world and me and G3. And then being on tour with G3 as this 
reunion happens, which just happens to be the, you know, the anniversary of the beginning of his career right. as, you know, yeah. joining the family business, so to speak, you know. Wow. Does he play guitar or is he just going to jump on stage? No, he plays guitar. <laughs> okay. Well, you never yeah. know, right? He, he might be just in the films. You know, it just it typically, you know, when he heard me shredding hours and hours every day of his life, and of course, oh. that was the last thing he'd ever wanted to do. So he, his life took a, a different creative turn, and he wound up being a filmmaker. But he always played guitar, and uh, and we always play a lot of guitar together. So it's natural to him, you know. Did you um, did you go out and get him lessons? I'm just kidding. No, I actually, I, I taught him until he couldn't stand me anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. So he's like, he fired his guitar teacher and his dad. <laughs> yes. He banished me from his room <laughs> at um, some point, which is only natural. <laughs> I get it. So I don't want to keep you long because I'm very grateful for this time. And I don't want to forget to give a shout out to uh, Melissa at Mad Inc. PR. Thank you very much for this, uh, this once in a lifetime interview. So, um, I did a little bit of hit. Well, actually, before I get into that, really, really, really quickly, Elephant to uh, Mars was your last album. Yeah. Uh, are you working on any uh, music for a new album, Joe? Well, well, I'm working on uh, a number of uh, sessions, but um, I, I did something for Doug Doppler, uh, one of my first students. Um, he's putting together another solo album. That that You're, session. You know Doug really. Doppler? Yeah, of course. I've known Doug since he was twelve, maybe or younger. Oh maybe. wow. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm just. Uh, oh, you don't. You gotta know Doug. Oh my God. I'm not from Doug. the East Coast, so. Well, now if you knew Doug, this I met Doug when I started teaching in Berkeley, California, mm -hmm. and he's he's local here. I grew up in New York, but he grew yeah. up in Aruba, I think. Um, and Doug was one of those students I had who had been playing as long as I had. I think he started when he was like six years old, so he already had a beautiful sound, a ton of energy. He's Doug is one of those guys that he just has the most positive energy out of anyone you'll ever meet in your life. So you, you'd never forget him. If you met Doug Doppler, you'd remember him. <laughs> anyway, wow. I did a session uh, for him. It's a long story why it all came together, but um, it, it turned out really great. And, and uh, next year, I think the album comes out. But I, I, I wrote two songs for Steve Vai, and we're doing, uh, we're doing two or three pieces of music to commemorate our first tour together, the Satch Vai tour um, that starts in March. March and, um, 22nd. Uh, thank you for saying that because I'm, st I'm staring here looking right at it, right? Yeah, March 22nd. Um, and uh, that, that's, that was a lot of fun because I was really, for the theme and the meaning, I was tapping into a place that has a lot of meaning to Steve and I back where we grew up uh, on Long Island in New York. I, I've known Steve since he was 12 years old and we went to the same public high school. And Oh, I, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, we got instructed by the same music theory teacher, a brilliant young guy called Bill Westcott. Um, and I taught Steve on and off for about three years, I suppose. Uh, we became contemporaries really fast. I'd only been playing about a year before I met him. And he was just so supremely talented that, we, you know, What's we what's in the school. what's in the water in the fountain in the high school there? I don't think you want to know what's in the water. <laughs> Hopefully they got rid of it. <laughs> oh really? Well then it must have been something else you guys were gifted with. I don't know. If you were born like I was in the fifties, you were subjected to every chemical that they've banned. So <laughs> Yeah, I think they've cut back on the fluoride, but I mean, yeah, here you. Yeah, I mean between red dye number three, everybody I remember my even my doctors used to smoke during office visits. I mean it was a crazy world back then. People forget. Yeah. Everything. No, you're no, no, right. no seat belts. Everybody smoked. It was just insane. Additives, leaded fuel, you know. Just. Yeah. Well, we've, yeah, the planet, it's, it's interesting. I don't want to get into politics, but the planet has cleaned up in a lot of ways, but a lot of ways not. So um, just so I don't uh, rush you here near the end, um, I'm going to put the links, everybody, to the Satchvi tour, to the best of all worlds. But most importantly, there's going to be links below for the G3 tour, which starts in about a couple weeks. Um, yeah. 13 dates. Speaking of the G3 tour, I looked over some of the set lists and holy shnikes. Um, <laughs> some of those set lists, um, I mean, you guys weren't individually playing all, but there's like 40 songs in some of them. Like, 
how long is the set list going to be for um, combined between you and the, and the three and combined with you three um, on this tour, Joe? Yeah, I, you know, um, I've done uh, a number of G3s where I, I think I generally play more songs because my songs are shorter. Well, you're uh, the just, overlord, remember? Yes, yeah. Now, this is something I think John Petrucci pointed that out to me once on one of the many tours he's done just about as many as steve has and and he was saying yeah it's interesting your songs are pretty short you wind up you can do more different things during your set because your songs are shorter and and you know i always say that's because i'm a, i'm a rock guitarist i'm not a progressive guitar player who needs eight minutes or something like that to get us mm -hmm. you know i like songs that are pretty much like it's, rock it's songs. not a grateful dead show yes yeah um, and then, uh, on the flip side of it, you have Steve who is very performance oriented. So he might have very few songs, but really long moments in the show where it's just him doing something mind blowing or checking his hair minutes. and, <laughs> well, you know, he, he just does so many crazy things that sometimes a song can't, can't serve it better you just everyone has to stop and just let steve do his thing and that that becomes part of the show so it's quite unique you know every performer that we've had gets to do their own thing at their own pace i mean that's the, that's the beauty of it we're not forced to conform to some uh, uh you know global set list everyone controls their own set and then we agree to play some tried and true songs at the end of the show that everybody not, not only that everyone loves and knows, but that are easy to have other guests just jump on stage uh, and join us. And so, you know, we can't, we can't have 11 minute complicated ensemble songs because yeah. then no one would ever join us, you know, but if you want Neil Sean to jump on stage, you better, you know, be able to play something that everybody knows. And, and that Good is a lot point. of for someone to reinterpret. And I think, uh, that served us very well uh, over the last three decades. Awesome, man. Um, just a couple quick things here. Um, don't want to forget. Um, I'm going to ask a cliche. No, it's not even cliche. What's your favorite restaurant down in Cali? Uh, well, here in San Francisco, uh, there's uh, uh, Thep La La. It's a Thai restaurant. It's actually in Corte Madera. Uh, I really love that restaurant. It, that's it's so unique. Um, well, not then, anymore. Everybody's going to be going there, Joe. <laughs> it is really a, just a fantastic restaurant. They all, it's so consistent. I was saying that the other night to my wife. Like we've been going there for like twenty years, and is every meal is outstanding. You know, it's, it's just I don't know how they are so consistent, but it's always really good and uh, really nice people in there. So perfect. See. I bet you haven't been asked that question recently. No, no one ever asked that. They always want to know what size picks I'm using or something. Perfect. Like well, man, I, I already know. So, Which are extra heavies, by the way. <laughs> that's right. Um, so, shoot, do, 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 do. oh, yes. this. I wanted to ask this last question, and then I'll, I'll let you go, Joe. Um, but I'm going to ask a couple of cliche questions. Um, favorite Canadian band, guitarist, artist, future, past, or present? Yes, you can. can Sorry. Uh, besides Brian Adams. Uh, Thank you. Or no, no disrespect to Rush, but I get that almost seven out of ten answers. So, is there one in there? Even a guitar player? Well, do you know the band Big Sugar? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, there you go. I think uh, he lives down in Texas right now. He does. Yeah, he's huh. he's down in Texas there, but he's originally from what? Edmonton, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd interviewed him for the standards. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. So Big Sugar, shout out to yeah. Big Sugar. Um, the opposite of unsubscribe. Subscribe, I guess. You think people should subscribe to my channel? They should right now. They should just, if they can hear my voice, they should subscribe to your channel. If they don't, they, they're subject to... You're going to kick their ass? A number of viruses that'll invade their computer. How about so. you say, if you don't subscribe to Border City Rock Talk, Joe Satriani is going to kick your ass? That That's too many words for me this morning, but okay. I'll just say you better subscribe because of what he said. All right. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. I'm almost ready to let you go and get to your next interview. 
Um, <laughs> but I'm going to ask this question here. This is an important. I've been thinking about it. Um, I played guitar, play guitar, sort of. But um, I remember the first couple songs I learned. You know, "Stairway to Heaven" kind of things. And you learn about you know things like uh, "Wasted" by Def Leppard. You know, your first bunch of songs that you kind of learn. Is there a song? I'm sorry. I'm just thinking. I don't know if I know that song, but "Wasted" I... it's off of um, um, "On Through the Night." Yeah, you, you've heard you you'd know it if you've heard it. It was a Steve Clark uh, riff, but anyways, um, what song would you say was the first song that after you started to know that you were good at guitar that you accomplished? from beginning to end, including the solo, that you're just like, holy shit, I did this. I can't believe it. I'm still working on that one. I mean, I'm always, what What surprises me about the, you know, the guitar playing, and a couple of times it's come up in my career, uh, and it has to do about trying to copy somebody or learn something mm. like note for note, you know? And every once in a while, you come up against these players who it doesn't matter if you learn it note for note, it's still not even close. And you could, you know, certainly with Eddie Van Halen, it's the truth because he had this magic. He was just magical. Mm -hmm. And every time he played something, he played it different and he just added to the magic, you know, that he already created. And, you know, we were speaking of Big Sugar before. I think Gordy Johnson is the same way. We Because we toured together. He, he put together a band called uh, Sit Down Servant. And I know Gordy quite well, but Gordy is one of those players that when he you know, when he strings up, stands there with his six string and he plugs it in, he just creates a magic that you can, if you play the exact same notes, it wouldn't even come close to the enormity of the sound that Gordy makes. I don't know how he does it. I honestly don't don't know you're, how he does. It. <laughs> well, you're very well read, and I, I I know that to be honest with you, you're well read, so you understand things like energy, nanoseconds, and frequency. So. It's true. You can copy somebody that people would say, yeah, even on a computer graph, it looks like it's identical, but it's always going to be a bit different. There's energy that's different. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And part of what I think makes it really, you know, uh, unique and difficult to copy is that when you think about, let's say we think about Eddie Van Halen's eruption, every little eight-year-old can play that thing now. And they've studied it to death and and... You can see them play it on YouTube, but it never sounds as good. Now, it's because the, everyone studies the one version that's on the album because it's so brilliant. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, Eddie, of course, knew how to play that 10,000 different ways. Mm -hmm. And every time that he played it, that that uh, amount of variety that was right there, just milliseconds away from him changing direction, added to that energy, that life, that spontaneity to it. When we play it, all we're doing is memorizing, do this, and then you do this, and then you, do, yeah. you know what I mean? We're just thinking about the one way, but he's just going, oh, I can play this a million different ways. It's still my thing, you know? And uh, I noticed here. that a lot. I, I remember when uh, I was doing this uh, contest with Guitar Center and guitar players, really great guitar players from around the world were... Uh, doing my songs and we had supplied them with backing tracks and i was totally blown away about how good all of them were but what was missing of course was that they were only doing the one version they only had one version to refer to so anytime that they didn't quite get what they had memorized things would suddenly sound awkward uh yeah, and, and, and of course and i realized boy if i ever have to copy somebody which now i do right <laughs> next summer i'm gonna have to copy a bunch of eddie stuff i better learn like as many versions of every eddie van halen song as possible so that i don't fall into that trap of you know either doing it perfect or suddenly becoming awkward you know well and, people are going to want to want to listen and see the steve Vai, excuse me the joe satriani um take on this song but making it still about song right Yes, yeah. I mean, you'd really do. I and mean, that's that was Eddie's thing. He is a brilliant songwriter. He used all of his massive technique always to move the song forward, and and that's what was. That's why we loved him so much. You know, right. he did both. You know, it wasn't just a showman. You know, right. With that, I'll let you go. Just one quick thing. I you know I want to get and shoot with Melissa because I know you're busy, Joe. Um, Roger Klein. Are you familiar with him? 
Roger Klein? Yeah. The guitar builder? No, what, sorry. RCMP, Roger, he was with Banditos. He wrote the King of the Hill theme. He's a friend of, of Sammy's. Tequila yes. guy. Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Well, well, he says Sammy should come on my show. And I know you're pretty good with friends with Sammy, aren't you? Yes, I am. I want to be good friends with Sammy. I spoke to him this morning, just about an hour ago, as a matter of fact. We were going over this song right here. We're writing. <laughs> let, let him know. I Sorry I missed his text, but I'd love to interview him. But anyways, thanks a lot for your time, Joe. You've been, you've been great, right. man. You've been awesome. Canada loves you. And I might even be at that show in Detroit to see you with the Vi thing. But everybody get your tickets for the G3 tour coming up on the 23rd. It's starting. And uh, once yes. again, thanks to our guest, uh, Joe Satriani, man. Thank you very much. Have fun out there. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Joe.